I'm going to give you guys my opinion on the new Mark V Toyota Supra, even though I'm in no position to afford it or buy it right now, just like the rest of the internet. So first thing I want to hit right off the bat is that meme going around right now. Everyone's sharing it. Mark IV Supra, $40,000. Mark V Supra, $50,000. Please, it's 2019 now where we're still that uneducated. There is something called inflation. I wanna educate you guys on this. Over time, sometimes the value of the dollar changes. There's a cool little calculator. You can just plug in the number and the year and get your current year value or other years, whatever you want. $40,000 in 1993 has the same buying power as $70,000 in December of 2018. So let's get that out of the way. So in comparison, the new Supra is actually less than the other Supra, the Mark IV Supra. So one thing I've seen a lot of speculation, this is a partnership with BMW. And I say, Toyota's been out of the sports car game for quite a while, let's be honest. They partnered with Subaru on the BRZ and FRS. They're partnering with uh, BMW for this. Um, basically what's going on is Toyota's trading some of their technologies for BMW's turbo technology. And BMW has some of the most advanced turbo technology in the market right now. So I don't think that's anything to fret. The new Supra is going to be using the B58 inline six. It's a three liter inline six is turbocharged. And uh, it is the successor to the N54 and N55 that was found in the 335i. Now I did a car review on the BMW 340i of the current generation. And that has the B58. And you know, if you know anything about N54s or N55s, they are essentially modern day 2JZs. A lot of people will say that. There's a lot of tuning potential with them. They can make power super easy. They can handle a lot of load. The B58 is the new replacement for that. And one thing the B58 has over the N54 and N55 is it's now a closed deck block, meaning it can take a lot more abuse. It's a lot stronger. Now, I do think the 335 brake horsepower is going to hurt them on selling. Uh, but one thing with the B58 that I found with the 340i review I did, a baseline dyno shows that car makes 330 to the wheels. That's a baseline dyno at the wheels. So factoring in drivetrain loss, it's almost at about 400 horsepower at the crank, realistically. Uh, BMW's been known for underrating their power numbers, and I think we got another case of this right here. To add to that, the car has, the motor has a lot of tuning potential. Uh, just a reflash on the B58 brought it to about, I think, 370 or 380 wheel without any modifications, just a reflash. So 380 wheel horsepower, that's pretty decent, let alone everything else that is potential with that motor. And one thing, the, Su the Supra, the Mark IV Supra got a lot of its popularity from being such an easily tunable platform. Yeah, it's a cool 90s sports car, but that's where it really excelled compared to the other sports cars as how easy the motor was to tune and how much abuse it could take. And seeing this new B58 literally mirrors that same thing that happened in the 90s. So I really don't understand why there's a lot of hate going on. If this helps Toyota hit the ground running and getting back into performance car building, I say more power to them. Now the low power out of the box does is going to hurt them, I feel. And I feel somewhere along the line, there may have been some kind of agreement between BMW and Toyota. I feel somewhere along the lines, BMW said, you have to, you know, keep the power there. That's our agreement if you're going to use our power. And this is totally speculation. This, what I'm saying now, has no, no proof to back it up. Um, but possibly BMW didn't want them building an M4, M3 competitor. So that might be why they're kind of low on power. So maybe in the next generation or an update or like a you know, half-year update, not half-year, half-generation update, they might have a lot more power. We'll, we'll see. And the aftermarket is definitely going to be pumping out parts for this car, no doubt. The aftermarket is going to hit the ground running also because the B58 has been out for a couple years now. So they've already got a little bit of experience with it. The fact that it's only coming in an automatic is very disappointing. But Toyota themselves had said, we have the hardware to build a manual. We need to see interest in the market. So right now, that's right there. Maybe if Toyota's reading comments right now, maybe they're already gearing up to sell with a manual. But I'll, I'll link it in the description. Toyota has said they ha they can do a manual. They need to see the demand for it. So go write to your representatives. Um, like not, not your senators or anything. I'm not sure who you write to there. But if you're genuinely interested in a Supra, or maybe not, don't, don't do that. Anyway, I'll let you, this is up to your own discretion. Write into whoever you need to a Toyota and tell them, we want a manual. We want a manual. Now, another thing the Supra is under fire for is its styling. And that one, 
I feel I can make a better opinion off of it in person. I feel like a lot of you cars look better in person nowadays than they do in images. So that is really subjective. Um, it does look like a clown shoe. That's what bothers me. It looks like a clown shoe. And I'm sure the Z3 fan base is rejoicing right now in love of the new Supra. The front's kind of eh. The rear, I think they did a good job with the rear. I've been seeing a lot of hit and miss with the rear end of the car. I think the rear end really embodies what a modern day Supra would look like if you compare them from Mark IV to Mark V. It does look a little skinny though. I think if it was wider, and maybe it's wider in person, I don't know. Now, I think the aftermarket's gonna really have some fun with the aesthetics of the car. I've already seen some renderings of it just like lower the wheels or like in different colors, and the car looks better. I even saw one with a different front bumper rendered on, and that looks great. If someone makes that front bumper, I bet they'll sell out immediately. The interior, that, it looks like a BMW. And not that BMW interiors are bad though. I think BMWs have great interiors. But it would be cool to see a little bit more of their own twist on the interior, I do agree. But it's not gonna be a bad place to be. It's not gonna be like a 350Z on the interior. I mean, come on. <laughs> what trash, all this plastic in here. I don't see, I see a lot of hate because of it sharing a Z4 platform. But let's go back and remember the Z4M from the mid-2000s. The Z4M is the better M3, let's be honest. It is the better car. So, I mean, I mean, there's potential here. There's potential here people do not see. On the chassis side of things, it seems like those who have driven the car, and it's been a lot of, it seems like mostly Toyota marketing, but it seems like a lot of those who have driven the car are in love with the chassis, so there's a lot of hope there. They might have created a very well-handling car. I see the people discriminating the car for looking like an FRS, looking similar, and it's like, oh, gee, really? A front-engine rear-wheel drive car from the same manufacturer. They look kind of similar, even though they're different models. Really? Really? You mean, you mean to tell me that they're both front-engine, they're both rear-wheel drive, they both share the same silhouette, and they're both in the same designers in the same era, and they look similar? No. In all honesty, I'm really excited to see how the new Supra does. I hope that throughout the years of the production, I hope it does sell well so we can keep cars like this in the market. And I do hope a manual comes. I do hope to see a power bump from the factory. That'd be great. I think that helps the car sell, really. Um, but I know the aftermarket will definitely be taken care of there. So I'm extremely excited to see what is to come of the new Supra. And if anyone from Toyota is watching this, if you want, I'm going to be doing a lot more car views this year. If you want, you want me to drive it. I mean, my humble 2,000 subscribers would be very appreciative. So we'll see what is to come. Time will really tell. We, we got to really make our judgment based off of how the car does in testing, you know, track days, uh, stuff like that. How it looks in person. Like, let's be honest. Like, we got to see it in person. And uh, then what we got to really keep an eye on is the next Z car. I'm not sure if it's been confirmed, but I believe the next Z car will be using the VR30, the same engine the uh, Q60 uses, which is about a 400 horsepower twin turbo V6. And rumors are that a Nismo version would have closer to 500 horsepower. We'll see what is actually to come, but I guarantee you, if the Z comes out soon with that motor and with a manual transmission and one more and, they nail a styling on the head, I think that Supra's dead in the water, honestly. And people that know me closely know I've always loved Supras. I've always been a Supra fanboy deep down from a very young age. I've always loved Supras over, I've always loved Toyota sports cars over the Nissan sports cars. And just the Nissan sports cars are way more affordable. So that's why I've always ended up in those instead. So there might, I don't think there's a little bias behind that. I feel like it's pretty fair to say that if the Z looks good, comes manual, and has more power, it's going to walk all over the new Supra. So, and Toyota might come back and fire back with a more improved model. You know, they, uh, we'll, we'll really have to wait and see, guys. I am curious to see what you guys have to say about the new Supra. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. If there's anything you agree with or disagree with what I say, let me know. Let's have a uh, civil conversation in the comments. I know that's kind of hard to do, but I think it'd be very fun. Anyway, guys. Hopefully, I'll be driving one sometime soon. I, I'm, that's not a promise, but I'm just really hoping that I'll drive one soon. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.